Hi guys, it's Emma with some more true crime for you. I'm sorry I've been away for a week. Um, I've just been having a bit of time to myself, well-needed rest. So we're back with another crime story today and it's the crime of Alexis Valdez. And this was happened in 2013. Now I just need to give you a warning that this may be a little bit graphic. So if you do not want to hear the graphic um, nature of this video, then um, have a look at the timestamp. I will put it in the comment section as to when that will be. So you can just skip that bit if you want to. So we're talking about Alexis Valdez and he just seemed like your average you know, 18 year old boy. Um, this was in 2013 and he'd left high school and he just needed a little bit of help with life really. And he asked his aunt, you know, if he could live with her for a bit. And she had a boyfriend called Sylvester Diaz Hernandez. And they agreed that Alexis could move in with them, but only on one condition, that he kept up with his school, that he got a job and, you know, he contributed towards the expenses of the household. He was obviously going to be using electricity and gas. He was going to be charging his phone and all this costs extra money. So they just wanted him to get a little job and to help out with some of the bills. And this just seemed like a great deal. You know, he was away from his parents. He felt a little bit more freedom. And, you know, he was fresh out of high school. He was finding his feet. And this was just a great way of transitioning into adulthood. Yeah? Well, you would think so. But Alexis didn't see it quite that way. And instead, he decided not to contribute towards any of the bills. In fact, staying with his aunt and Sylvester, he just used it as an opportunity to drink beer, sit around all day, not go to school, not keep up with the job, and just basically have no responsibilities for anything or anyone except himself. And obviously his aunt and Sylvester were fuming and he wasn't keeping up with his end of the bargain they had multiple conversations with him about it, but this only seemed to annoy him or upset him and made the situation worse. At this point, Alexis's drinking went from, you know, the odd drink on a weekend, a lot more than he would normally drink. And to make it worse, the alcohol that he was consuming wasn't his. So not only was he not keeping up with the bills, he was not you know, keeping up with his end of the bargain, he was drinking their alcohol. It wasn't long before Alexis just completely stopped working and going to school, living rent free, booze free, you know, just no commitments and at, at this all. point. His aunt and Sylvester had had enough. Now it was starting to get close to Christmas 2013 and they basically gave him an ultimatum. You know, you're not holding up your end of the bargain. If you're not going to behave and do as we've asked, then you're going to have to move out. Well, of course, Alexis was very annoyed at this. He couldn't believe that she would threaten him in this way or even kick him out of the house. He felt that it wasn't his house. And because it wasn't his house, he didn't feel that he should have to pay the bills. He didn't see that he was charging his phone and that the food that they were cooking for him or he was cooking for himself required gas or electricity. He didn't see that he was warm because the boiler was working and that was costing extra. He just felt that it was their house so they should pay. And so he hatched a plan, a plan to make her pay for threatening him and he felt that she just disrespected him in a big way. He could only see his own point of view. Now on Christmas Eve 2013, Alexis's aunt got all ready, did her hair, put on a lovely dress and disappeared off to a Christmas party, leaving Alexis and Sylvester at home. So Alexis stayed at home and basically got wasted on alcohol. Sylvester noticed that Alexis had literally drunk 
all of their beer that was there for the festivities, that was there for Christmas. Although he felt really angry with Alexis, he just basically said to him, come on, let's go to the store and we'll get some more. But you really do need to come with me. You've drunk it, so the least you can do is come and get some more alcohol. And he agreed. So they went off together in the truck to the store to buy more alcohol. On the way home, as they were walking through the house, Sylvester first and then Alexis behind him. Alexis felt that this was the time to carry out his plan. Sylvester started placing the beer down on the counter and Alexis reached over, grabbed the hammer that he had placed there waiting for when he got back, raised it above Sylvester's head and brought it down with a huge crack, fracturing Sylvester's skull. This continued. He continued to smash Sylvester's head in with the hammer until he knew he was dead. But the violence did not stop. He retrieved a butcher's knife and he knew, you know, that his aunt wasn't going to be home for some time. She'd only really been gone an hour and she was going to be at the party for a while yet so he had time to carry out what he wanted to do. And while Sylvester lay on the floor, he cut off his ears, his nose, lips and his arms. He then decapitated him. But this wasn't enough. He used his bare fingers to gouge out Sylvester's eyes. At this point, Alexis was absolutely covered in blood. And Sylvester was now completely unrecognisable. He carried... Sylvester's head into his aunt's bedroom and placed it on the pillow. This was his Christmas gift. This was his way of telling his aunt that she would never threaten him again. After living there at her house, rent free, electricity, gas, heating, beer, free. This was the way he was going to repay her. Unfortunately, Alexis's aunt would not come home to this terrible sight. As straight after this incident, Alexis dialed 911 to report that there was a body. The operator asked him if he'd carried out CPR to try and resuscitate. Alexis just laughed and said, I've decapitated him. The police soon arrived on scene as Alexis stood on the porch waiting for them, completely covered in blood with no attempt to cover up what he'd done and almost admitting straight away to them as they arrived that there was a body inside. Alexis was taken into custody immediately and charged with murder on the 26th of December 2013. Friends and relatives were left with so much rage and anger and questions. Why had Alexis done this? They'd taken him in They'd let him stay there. This was just too graphic. It was too gruesome. Why? They were left with so many questions. What was he thinking of? Alexis Valdez is a typical example of somebody with narcissism. You've probably heard that word before. We associate narcissists with an individual who holds this grandiosis of themselves. It's like a high opinion of themselves and they need admiration from others. They blame others for everything that happens to them and they're unable to acknowledge personal shortcomings or anything that they do wrong or goes wrong in their lives. Even if they get arrested, their sense of entitlement is so high they have unreasonable expectations that everything they've done is right and everything everybody does to them is completely wrong. They have a lack of sensitivity to rules or to others and they result in injury to others. They manipulate and exploit people in their you know, efforts to build themselves up. And if you think about it, Alexis waited until Sylvester had gone out and bought more beer and stocked up before he killed him. Everything was about him and what he needed. Sylvester's family 
has struggled to accept this rage-filled violence that took place and took their loved one away. And each year on Christmas, they have to remember this horrific crime and how they miss Sylvester so much. He was a very loving dad and cared very much for his kids. Alexis Valdez pleaded guilty to the murder in 2013 at Christmas of Sylvester Hernandez. Alexis Van Valdez was given 33 years in prison for decapitating his aunt's boyfriend, Sylvester. Well, that's a horrific crime at Christmas for you guys. I mean, no disrespect to anyone involved in this video and my thoughts and prayers are always with the families. This is basically for entertainment value and for educational purposes only. Thank you for listening and I'll be back with you soon for some new true crime. Bye guys, take care and have a really good Christmas. Love you all.